worship you. God, we ask you to open up your divine treasures from heaven. Feed us this morning until we want no more. God, you speak. I stand behind the cross. It's not me, God, but it's you, God. You get all the glory. You get all the honor. You get all the praise. We open up our hearts to receive of you. Not to just get happy over the word.
and you say, God, any way you want to use me, use me, God's going to do it. When you say, God, any way you want to use me, use me. You even got to watch how you say, any way you want to bless me, I'll be satisfied. God's got ways of blessing you, you know. But when we make ourselves available for the service of God, and I appreciate you, Apostle, amen. He took me in the office on last Sunday. He said, son, I was really blessed by the word and how he loved the Lord to use you. And it's not me. And I thank God for everyone who encouraged me by text. And I thank God for the words of encouragement. But saints, it's not my word. It's, I'm just the messenger. It's not the mailman's mail. It's your mail. He's just the messenger. So we thank and praise God for the word of God. The word that we hide in our hearts. That in this day and time, we might not sin against him. So, Apostle, we thank you and we honor you for this opportunity. Amen. If you have your Bibles, amen. Now, my desire is to be brief. <laughs> my brother-in-law had me laughing on this morning. I said, I'm going to try my best to be brief. He says, hey, let the Lord use you the way he used you, man, no matter how long it takes. So we may say one thing, but God may say another. You find me speaking in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. Luke, 20, Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. If you have it in your Bibles, we ask you to rest upon your feet. Some people say, well, why, Brother Bam, do you read such long texts? I know there are times in the Bible days that all they did was read the scriptures and read the scrolls. And guess what? They didn't even have a pew to sit down in. They stood up until the whole thing was read. So we thank God for the word of God. If you have it in your Bible, say amen. Amen. Let's read it on together. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. It says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26, and he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, this is what the lawyer said. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Now, how are you going to ask a question? You already know what it says. The lawyer says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 28. And he said unto him, Jesus said, thou hast answered right. This do, thou shalt live. The lawyer wasn't done, verse number 29, but he willing to justify himself. I mean, you know, sometimes we try to justify ourselves and justify our answers. Willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus had to break it all the way down to him. Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among the thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest. Somebody say a priest, a preacher, a man of God. And that priest came that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, one who works in the temple, when he was at the place he came, he looked on him and he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, somebody say Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, set him on his own beast, brought him to an end and took care of him. Verse 35, and on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, he went, went another farther, and gave it to the host and said unto him, take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more, when 
to repay it. Which now of these, said Jesus, which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? The last verse. And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go, do thou likewise. God, we ask you, bless your word today. Thank you for the hearts that's already prepared. Now, Lord God, let your seed fall on good ground. Let it bring forth a harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I came to encourage you with a simple word. You may take your seat. I came to encourage you with a simple word today. Nothing new, nothing flamboyant, nothing fancy. But something as simple as let, comp let compassion fuel your action. Let compassion fuel your action. Minister Bradley was all on my message on this morning in Sunday school. And the Lord laid this on my heart because we are now getting ready and getting ready to embark on vacation Bible school. And in this vacation Bible school, we are learning to join together to build. Build better hands. Build better minds, build better souls, better hearts. But before we can begin to work on the outside, we've got to build on the inside. Not the brick and mortar that's already done. Not the pews that's already done. We've got to build on ourselves. How many know it's time to build on ourselves? God's got some things he's designed for the believer to accomplish before the rapture take place. How many of us are believers? Let me see your hands. Let me see them high. If you're not ashamed, let me see if you're really a believer. Let me see your hands. You are called for more than just to occupy the pew. You are called for more than just to come on Sunday morning to clap your hand and stomp your feet and shout to the glory of God. We are called for more and that is to occupy until he comes. When Jesus comes back, he wants to see his children work in the vineyard and work in the fields. I'm not talking about the natural field. I'm talking about the spiritual field. There are souls that's dying by the day. Souls that's a walking, that's stepping into hell that don't know Jesus. And we have a gospel. We have a message of freedom. We have a message of hope that can really help them in this walk of life. Now let me see your hands of all the believers again. Look at your hand and say, I have a job to do. Ooh, think about what you just said. Say it again. Say, I have a job to do. Now, the job is not to be seen of men. The job that God has for you to do is not for you to always get a pat on the back. Somebody talked to me this morning. In the days and times in which we live, amen, many seek acceptance and acknowledgement and approval for their actions. Oh, yes, they do. Amen, you can look on YouTube. One time I was looking, amen, the other day and I saw on YouTube this young man approached a homeless man and asked the homeless man for a couple of dollars so he can get a cup of coffee. The homeless man says, you know, I'm, I really don't have much, but, and he began to look deep down in his pockets and he began to pull it out. His last two dollars he gave it to this man. This man says, I appreciate you doing this. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you $500. Another one says, I'm going to give you a $1,000. That's 
sounds good, right? That sounds wonderful. But then he turns around and he says, if you like what you see, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. What's wrong with that picture? The Bible says, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when you do alms, do not sound the trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the street. For they may have glory of men. So many people are seeking self-glorification. I'm doing this. Give me a pat on the back. I'm doing this. See what I'm doing here. But how many know God wants us? He says, what you do in secret, him shall re he'll reward thee. Now, what I do in secret is not to get a pat on the back openly. My record is in heaven. I want my record to remain on high. But the Bible says, but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thy alms may be in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. I'd rather receive a thumbs up from Jesus than a million thumbs from man. Amen. 
to see the soul, sometimes it will ignite our compassion. Amen. But we've got to see, amen, the soul. The Bible says, with loving kindness has he drawn us. And with loving kindness can we draw others to the foot of the cross. For God so loved the world, he didn't just talk about it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We must be therefore mindful of what motives, what motivates us in ministry. And since we are joining together to build better hearts, better minds, and better hands, we must make sure we build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ through love. Build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ through love. Now, if you haven't experienced the love of Jesus, how can I tell somebody else about the love of Jesus? You've got to first, amen, experience that love through that relationship with him. You've got to experience that love, amen, with that divine fellowship with him. Amen. Love is part of the fruit of the spirit. There's nine characteristics of the fruit. You have love. You have joy. If you ain't got, if you ain't got love, it's, you don't have joy. Real joy. If you ain't got real love, you can't have true peace. If you ain't got real love, you can't say, okay, God, I'm going to go through this with you because I love you so much. If you don't have real love, you can't have that gentleness and goodness, amen, and enduring faith and meekness and temperance. But when we are filled with God's compassion, we not only move in our emotions here at the Pentecostal church, here at the Pentecostal apostolic church, we're not just moved in our emotions, but we are moved with love in action. In our lesson today, I'm about done, but in our lesson today, written by Luke, Luke was a doctor. How many know that God not only calls, amen, the way to come to repentance, but he, he also calls those in high offices. He also calls those who are professionals. I'm going to pause right here. Young people, don't stop doing what you're doing. Amen. Get your education. But put you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek God first in all that you do. Amen. So Luke was a great physician. He was an educated man. Amen. One amen who wrote in detail the many accounts that Jesus did in his walk and his ministry on earth. Amen. Not only did he write about the miracles, but as a doctor, I'm sure he was like, wow. As a doctor, as a physician, he was like, that is so amazing. Normally I treat this condition, but here this man comes and heals. Normally I treat this condition, but here, amen, Jesus of Nazareth comes and speaks the word. How can he speak the word and a man is made whole? So Luke, the physician, amen, wrote all these things and documented it. I found it interesting to know that Luke was not a Jew. Luke was a Greek and a Gentile Christian who befriended Apostle Paul. So why did you say that? Luke is the only one, the only Gentile writer in the New Testament. So God used Luke, amen, to testify of what God has done. Amen. And in his story, amen, I was also interested and fascinated to understand how Luke even wrote the book of Acts. Luke partnered up, amen, with the Apostle Paul. Amen. He, and he wrote about the Holy Ghost. He wrote about, amen, the souls being saved and added to the church daily. As such as the, the doctor, the physician, Luke was the one to write it. So in the lesson today, amen, somebody say, let the passion 
called for the 12 apostles. Amen. And he sent them out. Amen. Before he sent them out, he gave them power and authority. Don't think you're going to step out there without power and authority. Don't think you're going to step out there, amen, just on a good field, amen, and a song and a dance. You've got to have power and authority in this day and age. Amen. So Jesus sent the disciples out to and sent the disciples and they gave them power and authority against unclean spirits. That shows you that Jesus said it's not all about me, but the Father may be glorified. Amen. So also, amen, he called 70 other disciples. Amen. And he sent them out two by two. Amen. To go out and glean the fields and work the fields. How many know sometimes you can't go by yourself? Sometimes it helps when you have some covering with you. Amen. So he sent them out two by two. And Luke wrote, amen, in his scripture, he said they came back to Jesus. And they said, God, oh, we are so glad that the devil is even subject to us through your name. We are so impressed that we can call on your name and people are healed. We can call on your name and people are set free. The same day this can happen today. Amen. When we get about our father's business. Amen. We should be able, amen, to see the soul saved. Bodies healed. Because it, it falls, it's not just only on his shoulder. We all have the work to do. So what's the problem? We got to lay aside. Every way. And the sin that so easily beset us. And we've got to run this race with patience. So the disciples, they came and they said, even the devil is subject to us. Jesus had to pull back the rain. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get happy just because the devil is subject unto you. Be happy that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Are you glad that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Amen. And that's, amen, that's the, that's the job. We want to get people registered for heaven. Come on, somebody. We want to get them registered for heaven. We want to, amen, that they have a new name over in Zion. Amen. We want them, amen, to know that they can have not just only abundant life here, but in the world to come. Somebody say, have you made your reservation? Have you made your reservation? Do you have all in your vessel? Is your lamb shook and burning? What are you saying? Do you have the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside of you? Do you have power and authority abiding on the inside of you? If you don't, today is the day. The day that you hear my voice, heart, not your heart. He said, I'll come in and I will suck with you. And he with me. And then we can go out and work the fields. Then we can go out. You look around to this entire community. There is a job that needs to be done. Not just only in him and look in your own community. There's a job that needs to be done. Souls that need to be saved. Amen. So Jesus, amen, says don't get excited because the demons are subject to you. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. He says, Notwithstanding, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written down in heaven. So uh, Luke began to write further. Amen. And he said that there was a lawyer. Somebody say a lawyer. A person who, amen, can decipher their argument. One who can present an argument well. Amen. Everybody knows. Somebody say lawyer. The lawyer came and he stood and he tempted him. Somebody say tempted him. He tempted him and said, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? How do you know every time you attempt to do good, evil is always present. Every time you attempt to do a work for the Lord, evil is always present. Don't worry about it. That way you know you're on the right track. When the enemy is fighting, when the enemy is on your trail, it ain't like because you've done something wrong. You're just disturbing up the nest. You're just disturbing the atmosphere of the enemy. 
You're just going into the enemy's camp and taking everything that belongs to you. So he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Amen. Jesus said, well, what is written? You're the lawyer. You know you should know what is written. And he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. And then you love your neighbor as yourself. He was quoting from the Old Testament. You know, we learned that as a kid. You must love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Then love your neighbor as yourself. So the next question is, who is my neighbor? Come on, Mr. Lawyer. You don't know who your neighbor? So Jesus had to break it all down and pull out the parables. And I love it because when Jesus pulled out parables, He's bringing, bringing, amen, a truth or a moral in a story form. He had to bring it all down, amen, to the lawyer, one who approaches judges. He had to break it down to the lawyer. He says, there was a certain man that went from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves. How many know when we're out there working for the kingdom, amen, you don't know who you're working among. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I don't know about this young man who was traveling down Jericho Road. Maybe he was looking like a wealthy man. I don't know. Maybe he was looking like a rich man. I don't know. But one thing I know, the thieves recognized him. Amen. Does the enemy recognize you when you come? Does the enemy recognize you when you walk forward? Amen. Does the enemy recognize you? Amen. When you do a work for the Lord. Amen. So they recognized him. Amen. The Bible says they stripped him of all his raiment. Not only did they take his garment off, but they wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. How many know the, Lord, the devil wants to leave you embarrassed? Oh, you said you're working for Jesus now? Uh-huh. He want to leave you embarrassed. By chance, there came down a certain priest. Now, we know the priest, amen, who worked, amen, in the temple. Amen. Amen. To try, amen, to bring about the, the sacrifices. Amen. So that the people's sins might be covered. The people's sins, amen, might be atoned. But even the priest who worked in the temple, amen, who did the blood sacrifice, he himself, he looked, he said to himself, he paused, and he went on the other side. How many of us are looking on the other side? We see the problem, but we look on the other side. We see the trouble, but we look on the other side. We see the person, amen, living in sin, amen, and they know they need a God. They don't know they need a God, but we see them and we look on the other side. God needs somebody who's going to lead, amen, and bring, amen, the captivity to him. Like I said earlier, we all have a job to do. Likewise, the Levite, when he was at, at the place, came and he looked on him and passed by on the other side. Amen. Now, the first man looked at the problem to be avoided. The second man looked at an object of curiosity. Not only did he look on the other side, he got a close to look. How many know people are getting up close to look? But they're doing absolutely nothing about the situation. Amen. We need to understand that we still have a job to do. If you don't get nothing else, get that today. We have a kingdom assignment. Don't look on the other side. Somebody needs your hand. Somebody needs your love. Somebody needs your compassion. Somebody needs you, amen, to bring them out of darkness. Help bring them out of darkness into the marvelous light. But here I'm thinking, there comes another man. Verse number 33. The 
the Bible said it was a Samaritan. Now the Samaritans had nothing to do with the Jews. The only reason why? Because the Jews saw the Samaritans as a mixed breed. Amen. Because the Jews always married and they kept within the line of the Jewish tradition. Amen. They saw and they looked at the Samaritan. Oh, that's just a mixed breed. Oh, they are nothing. They are nobody. Amen. But the Bible pointed out that this, what they call a nobody, did a work, amen, to bring somebody hurting and cause them to be, help them to be healed. How many know God can use anybody he wants to? All he needs is a willing vessel that's willing, amen, to do what he called you to do. Amen. The Bible says in the 34th verse, and he went to him and he bound up his wound. Not only did he bind up his wounds, but he poured an ointment. He poured an oil, amen, and wine. Amen. And the Bible says he didn't even stop there. He gave him a ride. Oh, my goodness. How many of us will even give somebody a ride? Oh, it got quiet in here. I'm almost done. Amen. The Bible says he put him on his beast and he brought him to the end and he took care of him. He didn't even stop there, but the next day he went to the innkeeper. He said, okay, anything that it costs to get this man up and going, he said, I'm willing to come back and pay for that. That is ministry. To give of yourself. To give of your resources, not be stingy. To give, amen, of what God has blessed you with to bless somebody else. And that's a part, amen, of the kingdom working, amen, the ministry. Amen. The Bible says, amen, that he paid the debt, amen, for the man. So he asked, amen, he asked that lawyer, he says, he says, now show, he that show mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do thou likewise. Now it's easy to hear a good word, but you got to go and do thou likewise. You got to put the word into action. Amen. You got to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. So what is this compassion that I'm talking about? What is this drive, amen, to fuel our action? It is the love Amen. That God has given us to express. I look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. 1 Corinthians says, Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not love, I'm just making a whole bunch of noise. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and I have no love, Amen. The Bible see, the Bible says, I have become as a sounding brass and as a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith, watch this, that I can move mountains, but if I don't have love, if I don't have charity, I am nothing. The Bible says, okay, he's doing something good. Though I will stole my goods to feed the poor. And even if I go to the extreme, and though I give my body to be burned, and I don't have love, the Bible says it profits me nothing. Since love is the foundation that we must build on. Like I said earlier, when you see the, the individual, make sure you see the soul and see them through the eyes of love. He said, and though I bestow my goods to be the poor, give my body to be burned, and shall not carry, it profited me nothing. First Corinthians 13 and 4, it gives you detail of what charity is. Charity suffers long. God, I'm ready to get out of this. Uh-uh. You never need to be perfected. Charity suffers long and is kind. Some people just as bitter as a, as a snake. And you wonder where their love is. But the Bible says charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity is not resentful against somebody. Amen. The Bible said charity vaunteth not itself. It doesn't puff up. Just like I was telling you about 
like the guy on YouTube, it doesn't puff itself up just to be seen of men. Amen. The Bible says, it, the Bible says it does not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not its own. It's not easily provoked. Now, some of these people, you make a man, they'll bite back. You make a man, they snap back. Amen. But the Bible says, love even covers a multitude of sin. Amen. So we've got to have the love of Jesus. It's not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity. Ah, ha, 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 ha. He got what he deserved. Uh -uh. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices what? In the truth. Love bearing all things. Love believes all things. Love hopeth all things. Love endureth all things. Amen. Love never fails. Whether there be prophecy, you see it all the time. I got a word for you. And the word don't go no farther than their lips. You don't see no action. Amen. But the Bible says the word never fails. Whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And I like the living verse that says, but when I was a child, I speak like a child. Saints, some of us, we just need to grow up. And we just need to stop talking like children. We need to start growing up and stop acting like children. Well, he hurt my feelings. I don't like the way he said what he said. The devil is alive. We need to grow up. We need to be strong for Jesus. Because if you can't take the word that they say to you, how can you take the attack of the enemy? So saints, we need to grow up. When I was a child, I spake like a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We're living in a season where we got to put away the childish things. We live in a season where we got to put away the pettiness. We got to put away, amen, the small things, amen, that would keep us from working in the kingdom. We've got to put it aside. The Bible says in verse 13, now abideth faith, now abideth hope, now abideth charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Saints, let compassion fuel our action. Don't just get out there and do it just to be seen of men. You've got to have love on the inside. The kind of love that will bear all things. The kind of love that will believe all things. That hope all things. And most of all, will endure all things. Love never fails. I don't care how much they say they hate you. If you've got the love of Jesus on the inside, you can love them past the hate. When you have the love of Jesus on the inside, you can say, I don't care how much you hate me, I still love you. I'm still praying for you. Amen. When you do that, you show a sign of maturity in God. Amen. How many know we still need to grow up in God? Amen. We need to grow up in God. Amen. And put away the childish things. Saints, I'm encouraging you today. As we get ready to embark on vacation Bible school, as we get ready to build, amen, as we begin to build a better mind, better heart, amen, and better hands, let's not forget the ministry that God has appointed to each one of our hands. And that ministry, amen, is to move with compassion, reach the lost for the kingdom's sake. Amen. God wants us, amen, to do the work for his glory, his honor, so that when we see him, he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou been faithful of a few things. I'll make you rule over many. Enter to the joy of the Lord. Can you rest upon your feet? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before we, amen, can move, amen, in that compassion, before we can let our compassion 
will be filled with the action that God wants us to have. We must first have that relationship with Jesus. And oftentimes, amen, we see it from Sunday to Sunday. The altar call, they compel men and women, women to come. And like I said last Sunday, nobody knows you but God and you. You know where we stand, amen, in the eyes of God. This is the dressing up room. This is the place, amen, to get it right. This is the place that we need to get it together. The Bible says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his works. Listen, we're not saved by works. Don't get it wrong. You're not saved by what you do, but you are saved by grace through faith. And it is a gift of God. Are you here today to accept his gift? He has a gift for you. Who will be one to say, Lord, I want to come and receive the gift? As I call for the elders and the ministers at this time, who will be one say, I want to be able to know you as my personal Savior. I want to be able to know you, Jesus, as my personal Lord. I want to be able to, amen, to call on you while you are near. I want to be able to, amen, to when I'm standing in need of help, that you can reach out, amen, and hug and hold me and minister to my need. Are you here? We have water. We have clothing. We have somebody to baptize you in Jesus' name. The what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, are you here? Hallelujah. A wonderful change. Oh, it can take place today. It can take place today. Joy comes in the morning. God, we thank you. 
thank you for the word that set us free. Help us to be a doer of your word, not a hearer of We thank you, Lord God, for your word. It's established in heaven. In Jesus' name, put those hands together. Let's give God the praise. God bless you. Give me praise again for the word today. 